Hey there, guys. Um, Candy Cane Walrus here. Doing a review on the Shrade SCHF10. Great knife. Um, yeah, it's from my unboxing video. So, right now, we're going to be doing some chopping. And um, there, I have some other things. It's a great knife. Your false head, your jimping. It's got a lot of jimping. 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 I like that jimping right there because if I put a lanyard on this, I can ride lower and chop. But um, for right now, we're just gonna do some basic chopping. All right. Give it a good 30 chops. This is wet wood. Bites in pretty good, especially if you hit right there with that um, concave edge. Yeah, it's, it's got that sort of like how Kukri uh, does. Gets a good B. It's a fairly large piece of wood. You know, gets a good inch in there. Great. You know, you normally wouldn't be doing too much of something like this. It's just for the basic test. You know, gets in there pretty nice. Um, that blade holds really well. That tip doesn't doesn't break off. Again, this is wet wood, really wet wood, because it literally just stopped raining. Um, it hasn't quite heated up enough to get rid of all the rain, but uh, there's the chopping. You know, it gets a good quarter inch blade. It's thick, so it's got a lot of weight. You know, if you can do it right. It bites in there real good. Takes a few good chunks off. Um, so here's that. Yeah. Great knife. It's got that Macarta handles, light grip. Oh, batoning is another thing you want your knife to be able to do. Um, so, you know, there's a, another piece of wood we're gonna chop up real fast. That's fat wood that I've collected recently. I've cut it down. Cause you know, I process it all myself instead of going out and buying it. It's really cheap if you buy it. I, I even sell it in big old chunks and stuff. Um, but yeah, so here's that. Uh, fat wood. Get this out of the way. I'm here today doing a little hunting. Okay, so there's the light one. Um, Alright, so let's start off with the fat wood. Yeah. Resonated everything so it's a little tougher than regular wood because it's. Uh, but this is dry too, so. Don't feel too amazed. great. That was, wow, that was easy. Um, let's do that again. Good. Bites off good chunks. That 
that's sort of how I process my fat wood. Um, I just baton it. It's really good. Um, baton. Batoning is good again because it's a, it's a thick blade and I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, so yeah, I a few good chunks of fat wood right there. I could even cut these down to be thinner if I wanted. Now what I do is I find knots of dead pine trees. Um, and you gotta look at them when they look kind of pitchy on the outside, but they're kind of gray like this. But they got kind of that sort of color on the outside. Like in there. Oh, that smells good. Um, they're gonna be good fat wood producers. Great for breaking down saw, so I don't always have my stuff, and then feather sticking. Uh, fat with more shaving. Now the only thing I don't like about this knife is um, back here, you know that jimping, like my, uh, my buck does. It has no finish. Or it, it's satin finish, but I mean it doesn't have like the... Uh, uh, oh, I forget what they call this. But it doesn't have this on there. You know, it doesn't have that black baked on um, coating. It's just the stainless steel. So it's good for striking. So I... Um, what I'm thinking about doing is just taking some sandpaper and roughing it up like right there, you know, at the end, somewhere, razor sharp. Um, I'll be doing a review on my buck here pretty soon. You can still buy them, just not like the one I have. Uh, it's cause, or you can probably still buy mine. Um, I got mine from Dog Go Running. Great guy. Great knives. Uh, I think I paid 27 for that. Probably should have brought some different tender too. great for shaving this fat wood. Fat wood's not going to feather stick too well. Um, let's see if I can find some dry moss. Just do a small little. Let's uh, hit that rock. I don't need to re-edge this. Alright, but anyways, um, they're sticking here. Ah, it's not too sharp anymore. It's in there pretty good. I do recommend getting a sharpener, like a Lansky has one. One thing I don't like is this sheath on this knife and its thickness a lot of times. 
the sheath, pretty good sheath. Um, it's okay for the price. And it's got that pocket, and I've got my Gerber sharpener in there. I've also added a small multi-tool looking like thing. So it's got a decent pocket, but you can't fit an Altoids tin in there. I mean, you can, just not with the knife in it. Um, and then, oh, it's actually behind the camera here. Uh, I've got this, um, you know, Tic Tacs. Everybody just does those Altoid tin survival kits. I do Tic Tac ones. Um, Cause they fit in there. You know, I got that stuff. Some fire strikers, a few matches. A uh, small fishing kit. It fits in that pocket real great, you know, Altoids, and I have an inner tube around it right now. Um, so, great knife. You know, uh, let's see if we can put on some bigger wood. And, round up some moss. So, there's the sheath, there's the knife. Alright, put my belt back on. Uh, Great knife. I it's a forty. It's under fifty dollar survival knife. I don't like the coatings because they get kind of scuffed up real fast. But it's easy to clean them back up or even recoat them. I want to re-angle that blade because I think that's a forty-five right now. This is it the best? It's all over these rocks in here. It's not the best moth to start a fire with. It's looking more for puffier, but it's dry. It's dry as a bone. Um, so we're gonna put a little bit of that in there and show you how that does with the ferro sieve rod. See, it just doesn't strike anything off because of that coating. Oh, there we go. Let's see, it took some of the coating off the knife. So, for that reason, I carry my buck or another multi tool. Oh, I even have this one in here. So, you know, if I don't ever have a real, uh, another real knife, I guess, you put it, I always have this. Fairly decent. too many knives. Well, you can, but I like them. Uh, just do a chunk of block. Okay, turn block. on my tinder. Oh. 
Okay, so anyways, great knife. I couldn't throw it off right for you guys today. Doesn't help that everything's all wet. Um, okay, so batoning bigger wood. Big chunk right there. I don't know if you can see that. Get everything out of the way here. Um, great chunk of wood. You're not gonna normally be batoning something this big, especially something this wet. It's okay for processing wood. I wouldn't recommend just bringing in an axe if you know you're going to do a lot of wood processing, but in a survival scenario, it does a pretty decent job of cutting up the outside and getting into the inside. Um, where it's drier, you know, especially when you've had a lot of rain, the inside's going to be a little dry, especially in dead wood. Like that's all dry right here, and this is wet. Way to test that, um, especially when you're hunting fat wood, is just take the piece of wood and your lips are real sensitive to moisture. And if you can feel moist on your lips, it's wet. Oh, yeah, see? That's fat wood right there, that chunk. It's not a whole lot. But, you know, especially when you're in a scenario where um, you need fire, uh, you uh, you can burn that wood. The knots, they burn for a good five minutes, the smaller ones, all the way up to like 20 to 30 because of that sap. Great. So, you know, process the fat wood pretty good, cut that up um, pretty decent. It's wet and it's old, so it kind of crumbles a little bit because all it cracks break clean through but you know it does a good job I do recommend this knife it's got my seal of approval anyways um, the only thing I would suggest doing to it or considering is that it doesn't have a place to strike a fair seam rod you know you can always bring another knife but that is a lot of times a lot of weight you don't want to carry and I would I do say you want to watch these grips because they get kind of scuffed up too, the way they've done that micarta. But again, nice knife. It gets dirty real easy. Not a problem though. Uh, they could improve on the sheaths. Make it a lot better. It's got the classic, you know, Velcro, everything. Um, it's a 10 inch knife, blades almost 7 inches, it's about 5, 5 and a half. It's a good quarter inch thick, I may be wrong on that, feel free to correct me if I am. You can look up the specs even, just to make sure, uh, and I do have several things that I could carry in there. I normally have this sharpener and this, but I found that these Tic Tac containers fit fairly well, and I'll do a how to on these. Or just what I have in mind. It's sort of like the Altoids tin survival kit, but it's smaller. Um, it's a little more watertight. You can even put, you know, like I did, put an inner tube around, and that allows you to carry sharp objects right there, like I have the hooks and stuff. And that. And then those all can go in there. That could even go in there with the sharpener. Oh, maybe not. Great knife. I do recommend it. I would suggest finding a different sheath. I haven't been able to find one yet, because I don't think it's really old enough for anybody to be. Plus, the way that blade doesn't go straight, it kind of curves in. It makes that bigger part harder to come out with my um, Kydex sheaths, but I've heard that you can just take packing tape and do a good four layers of packing tape over that to make it like straighter. And when you're forming the Kydex. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing a review soon on my buck and an Nesbit stove, so stay tuned.